Hello, in this video, I am going to show you the change directory command in terminal. So I'm using this on Mac, but you could do it on Mac. You know, this because, you know, Linux has obviously bash scripting as well. So you can do it on that. You can, you know, you, you can even do bash and terminal based stuff on Windows now. So literally any platform that you want, you can, you know, use this. So change directory is used in the terminal so you can either you know have your terminal icon saved here or you can go to the search up here search for terminal and the final place to access it is if you right click your finder go to new finder window applications scroll down keep going down 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 and you'll see that there's no terminal. That's because it's in the utilities folder. So if you scroll down, there it is. Either way, you can open that up. So what I'm gonna do is I'll zoom in a little bit. So it's easier for you guys to see. And what we'll do, I'll create a folder on the desktop. And I'm gonna call it, you know, Bob. So folder Bob, and in there I want to put just a quick file as well, so I can just, you know show that I'm in there. So I'll go to like my documents, and let's say if I go to you know, FireDev for example, grab this thumbnail, and in there I put this file. So if I want to change directory, you put cd space and then you put the directory you can either type it out or what's cool is if you just drag it on like that it changes to that directory if i type in ls which is a list command you'll list every file and folder in there as you can see we are now in this folder so that's you know one basic way of you know using it and that's probably gonna be 80 percent maybe 90 percent of the time this is how you use it but there will come a time where you'll need some more advanced functionality so I'm going to cover every little nuance that the terminal chain directory command has to offer. So the first one is, you know, changing to your home directory. And to change to your home directory, you put CD, you put the tilde icon, so this like little squiggly icon for me. It's next to my one if I press shift. My keyboard, because it's not a Mac keyboard, it's a Logitech keyboard, doesn't show it, but if I press, you know, shift on that, but you know, you might need to have a look depending on where you are, you know, in the world as well, but it's called the tilde key. And if, you're, if I press enter on that, and I'll type ls, it's gone back to my home directory. And if I just show you, this directory go to macintosh and then go to users for han this is the directory that's showing so i'm gonna hide all these hidden files and folders no tip if you press command shift dot it hides them all so yeah it's showing all of these files and folders there so by default this is where it will you know end up so if i close it down if i reopen it let me zoom back in And I'm typing ls. As you can see, you know, that's by default where we are. So that's how you just change to your home directory. Next, if you want to change to the root directory, put cd forward slash, you don't put anything else. And now you're aware in the root directory for typing ls. And let me show you where this is. So if we go back, so it's applications core bin. And so this will be over here. And uh, showing hush, hit, hidden folders and folders as well. Uh, actually, no, it's not showing hidden folders and folders, sorry. But yeah, it's over here in the root now. And you know, your library applications, and you know, you can switch to any of these folders as well. So next, what I wanna show you is actually moving around directories, you know, up and down. So first of all, let me go to my Bob folder. So I'm gonna clear first. If you type in clear, enter. It doesn't like, remove it, it just basically puts a bunch of empty lines. CD, drag this on. And now, if I wanna go you know, back one folder, put dot dot. So this won't go back to the folder that I was originally at. This goes up a folder. So if I go dot dot, uh, permission denied. No, cd, sorry, dot dog, let's say, 
And now we're in the desktop because this was in the desktop folder. If I type in CD dot dot again, this has gone up one more and that's gone, you know, to the home directory. So now I want to show you again the move in, you know, the dot dot command. So you can move up multiple directories as well. So imagine if you want to, you know, you want to move up two directories. You type in CD, you put in dot dot forward slash dot 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 forward slash. And you can keep doing this. So this will be three directories, this will be four directories. And if I press enter, we are now back up to directories to the home directory. If I clear that. Okay, so that's how you move up multiple directories. But how do you change to your previous directory? So again, I'm gonna cd to Bob, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say oh, you know I don't want to be in Bob right now. I want to be in this folder. Don't want that. Okay, so I don't want to be there. I want to be over here. Uh, I don't want to be there. I want to be over in this folder. Okay, and then you decide ah you know I don't want to. Be in the folder. I want to be in the previous one, not one folder up, but just in the previous folder that I was in. So you type in CD, you type in dash or hyphen as it's called as well. And look, we are now in the previous folder. If I type it in again, we are now in the previous folder. We are now in the previous folder. So what you'll notice is it doesn't have a history. So it doesn't just keep going back. You'll literally switch back and forth. So if I type in CD dash, this is the new folder, but this is now considered the previous folder. So obviously, as you can tell, if I type that in, this is now the new folder, and this is now considered the, you know, the previous folder. So again, it only allows you to just switch, you know, once, and after that, it would essentially be, you know, back and forth. So another thing I want to show you is actually changing directory to a path that has spaces in it. And if I clear this, and let's say if I, you know, create a folder in Bob, and I call it, I uh, press Command Shift N if you're wondering how to do that without right clicking. And I call it folder space one. If I want to, you know, chain directory, obviously if I type in, you know, CD, I can drag it on, but this actually segues to another interesting point, and that's about absolute paths and relative paths. So I'll cover that, and then I'll go to, you know, directories with namespaces. So an absolute path is one where I type in CD like this, I drag on, a path like this, and this is like four slash. So this is literally saying this is the exact path from the root to go there. And if that changes, you would have to even change it as well. If, for example, I'm over in let's say Bob, for example, like so, and I want to go to this folder, I'm already in Bob. So I don't need to say, you know, go to users, go to Frahan, go to desktop, go to Bob and then go to folder one, I'll just list this, this out, I can literally say CD, type in the folder name, so F-O-L-D-E-R, and so this is where it gets a little tricky, so I'll say folder two, but this won't have spaces, and I'll say folder two, and there we go. So it, you know, it has context to what's in there as well, relatively speaking, so if I go back, and print this out, we have folder one, folder two, if I try to navigate to folder one, you would logically put you know, this. So that doesn't work. You just guess the first keyword. So let's say if we put do that, that obviously doesn't work because you know folder one doesn't exist as well. It's folder space one. So you know what do we do? The way you do it is you, you type in quotation folder space one. And there you go. So you have to put the quotation, then it knows that anything between the start and the end is the whole folder name. And that can, you know, go with paths as well. So if I was to actually type in CD and drag this on, not this one, the folder one. And so they're actually using uh, this to, say, you know, you know, it's a character that allows uh, the terminal to read that there's a space there uh, without, you know, 
end in it, but you could literally have the same format and you could just do a quotation as well. Obviously, I'm already here, but if I you know, wasn't, and here's another tip. If you press up and down, you can go through all the previous commands in that session as well. And so if I do that, as you can see, it navigates to it as well. So if you have spaces, you want quotations around the whole folder path. That could be a relative folder path or an absolute folder path as well. So, But the relative folder path, once you start getting used to them, because initially you think, oh, you know, I'm just going to drag it on or write the whole path. But when you get, you know, really used to it, trust me, that's going to just elevate the game immensely. So if I type in CD, dot, dot, and I'm going to create a new folder in here. And I'm going to call it chicken. So if I'm doing like a relative path and I type in CD, I'll type in C. If I press the tab key, it will, you know, fill it out for me. And I can press enter. So I'm going to go back. But you might be thinking, what happens if you, you know, type in CD folder, like for example, and I'm pressing tab. It, 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 it's, it's like... So, so let me do this again. So press Control C, just exit that at that command. If I type in CD, F, O, if there's one folder that has this sort of format, great. If not, you'll complete part of it as much as you can without, you know, being specific. And then beyond that, if I press Tab, you'll literally just show me the folders, and now you'll let me switch. So we want folder one, folder two, folder one, folder two, folder one, folder two. So let's have one folder one, press Enter. There we go. You know the alarm. And so that's, you know, auto-completing directories as well. So again, this is also very useful. Now what you, we can do is use what's called a wildcard to match patterns. So again, we're going to say CD. So if I do CD, and uh, let's just say uh, I'm going to put in chicken 45. So imagine... I'll put it in chicken, for example. I know that there's a folder in, in here. This is especially useful if you don't have like a, you know, a visual element and, you know, or you're doing some sort of bash scripting. I know there's going to be a folder. It's going to have the word chicken at start in this format, and then it's going to have something else after it, maybe a number. But there's only, there's only going to be one folder in there. So what you can do is put a wildcard, which is the asterisk key. And it'll basically say, find a folder, Core chicken, and then you can have anything else at the end. So it finds 45. So I've never done this, so this will be interesting. What happens if I do chicken 46? And I do CD. So yeah, it's it's not liking it because it's like there's two folders you know with that sort of format but again you know it can be useful it's something that i generally don't really use but good to know again this is meant to be the most comprehensive you know guide we have and now what i want to show you is i want to navigate to chicken 45 and i'm going to type it out so cd chicken 45 press enter Okay, so this didn't work as expected because I was trying to show you the case sensitivity because usually if you try and do it with the wrong case, it doesn't work. So that did not work the way I had hoped. So I've got chicken 45. Okay, so they've changed that. That's something you can ignore. That might be the case still in Linux or in some of the bash in Windows. We used to be the case that folders were case sensitive and you could have the, you know, if you typed in, you know, something like this, CD chicken 45 with a lowercase c, and when it was really an uppercase c, it wouldn't work, but apparently it does now, so we can ignore that. And apart from that, we're pretty much good to go. Again, you might get a, you know, you might get errors like no such file or directory. Just make sure the path exists on the folder. Make sure the path is correct as well. Another thing that, you know, might be interesting in showing you is the sudo command so sudo is super user do so super user do and this essentially overrides you know some error so if you're trying to navigate to a path i mean i'll see if i can find a path that it won't want me to generally navigate to so if i go hidden file maybe maybe you know i tried this one i'm not too sure 
if he has a problem with this folder, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so he has no problem with that. Ooh, that one here might be the one. Permission denied. Okay, so if you have permission denied, what we can do is override that by typing in sudo, then the cd command, and then let's just drag this on. So this, uh, this is just, you know, super privileges. Press enter. It asks you for your password. I'm just typing it in. It will not show you password or even show you asterisk to mask it. So it is typing it. And if you press backspace, it does, you know, you know, remove a character from the password that you've typed in. Well, so just bear that in mind. And this is a password that you sign in using your, you know, for your Mac. Not That won't necessarily be the one that you have with your Apple ID, but it's the Mac password. So press enter. And now we're in this. Uh, are we in here? Doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, okay, so we apparently do not have the correct permissions for this one. Okay, again. Uh, you know, right now I can't find the folder that this will essentially work for. But ignoring that one, you might get another one. Um, not with like that red sort of no entry icon. If you get another one there, it's you know you can't access it. You do the sudo command, type in the password, and you should be all good. So if you have any questions, feel free to post down in the comments below. And this has been your comprehensive guide to using the chain directory command in terminals. So this will work on you know, Mac, Linux, and now on Windows as well. So if you like videos like these where I'm doing comprehensive guides on different commands on terminal, command prompt, or you know, whatever it is, I'm just really deep diving, you know, feel free to let me know. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. And remember, like the video and subscribe. Bye.